Hi there. This is the first tool I made. Must have been like four years ago. I'm honestly surprised at how well this has held up, considering how little I knew about woodworking back when I made it. But I am starting to feel like I need a couple of different variants of mallets, actually. Uh, I would like, for one, a heavier joiner's mallet that has a, a lot of weight that can really force joints together and I would also like a small mallet uh, with just a short handle for holding right up by the head and tapping chisels with and uh, I have this little log of oak that I think I'm going to use for that. So let's get splitting. Here are my options. I think I want to use this one for the joinery mallet, something like that. Well, I should shift it further out, actually. Something like that, I think. And then my little chisel mallet will be this one. I can get a pretty good diameter in there. And then I have two left over for something else. So I was thinking I might want to keep this live edge on here. That could be really cool. But I have decided I would rather do a sort of domed shape here. Uh, so I'm going to start by flattening it, making it parallel to the underside because that will make it easier to join the handle into the head. And then I will carve the dome into it. So this is the piece that will be the handle. It's ash, which is a traditional wood for tool handles. It will be rounded over, but despite that, I want to square it up first because I will cut some joinery into the end of it. And that is a lot easier if everything is square. And now I can lay out the joinery. I will use a double mortise and tenon because I think it's gonna look cool. It will be six millimeter tenons. So I'm going to set the mortise gauge to that width. And just to test if I got that right. Yeah, that looks good. Oh, 
the great thing about this style of mortise gauge is I can lock the rods together back here and loosen the fence and now they will stay in relation to each other but I can adjust the offset so now I can still scribe off of my reference face but with the offset that I want All right, now I can transfer the placement of the tenons onto the head. I wanna start by finding the center. And I'm going to use some blue tape as a little bit of help with seeing the lines. And I have my center right there. Now I have to transfer this around to the other side because this is a through mortise on tenon and um, let's see if I can figure out a good way to do that. All right, so what I've decided to do is instead of trying to transfer it around with square, uh, which is not going to be very accurate on all these angles, I realized I can just measure from the center to the edge of the tenon, get the center measurement on the top surface and then measure to the outside of the tenon there again and if I set my adjustable square to that distance I can use it to again line it up in this dimension I'm going to make this a wedged tenon. Two wedges will be inserted after assembly, making the tenon flare out inside the mortise. And uh, to accommodate for that, I have to widen the outside by about that much, I think. When driving the wedges into the tenons, there is a risk of splitting the entire handle and I want to prevent that by housing the shoulders of these tenons inside a larger mortise. 
I have to get it all the way in place and then scribe around this section. joint is done. I'm not going to test fit it anymore because it's so difficult to get apart but I am uh, I'm pretty sure this is going to fit. I'm going to make wedges from this piece of walnut left over from the corner table but before gluing it up I think I should uh, do some shaping. Time for glue. All right, that's enough messing around with the details. You know what happens next. Do you really have to apply finish to a mallet? Mm, I'm not sure. You could probably get away without anything at all. But I don't know, it just feels better to have to have something on there and uh, I mean with end grain like that there's just no way I would not put oil on that gonna let that soak for a while and then come back see if I need to remove any excess or add more on the end grain all right there we go the joint is absolutely overkill there is no reason to do a housed wedged twin mortise antenna. I wanted to. It was fun and uh, I think it looks pretty cool. Let's try it out.